Good morning, Bethel. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, the first scripture is Romans 8, 18 through 25. I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming joy that is going to be revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. It was the choice of the one who subjected it, but in the hope that the creation itself will be set free from slavery to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation. We ourselves, who have the spirit as the first crop of the harvest, also groan inside as we wait to be adopted and for our bodies to be set free. We have saved in hope. If we see what we hope for, that isn't hope. Who hopes for what they already see? But if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. The second scripture reading is Luke 2, 1 through 3. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The first enrollment occurred while Quarius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So for this Advent season, we are going to be taking a journey. We are going to journey from Rome to Jerusalem, to Nazareth, to Bethlehem, to even beyond. And you're probably wondering, why, Pastor, are you starting with Rome this week? Well, I want us to start in Rome because, if we're honest... A lot of what happened started because of Rome. See, Rome was 2,000 miles away from Bethlehem. And in that time, there was no traveling that journey. Rome had the Mediterranean Sea in the middle of it between Rome and Bethlehem. So I imagine you're kind of wondering why we're talking about Rome. That's not the the path that Jesus and Mary took. But the reason they took the journey at all is because of Rome. See, it starts with Rome. See, in Rome, the powers that be, uh, Caesar wanted more money. He had expanded his reign all over for, for miles and miles, all the way even into Africa. I mean, he was the ruler, and he wanted everyone to pay their taxes. And the only way he could guarantee that the Jews would pay their taxes is that if everybody went home and they took a head count and made sure you did it. And so he sends word that there must be a census taken, and that would be the time you're paying your taxes, and everybody must go back home. Well, I can only imagine how Mary and Joseph must have felt knowing that they had to travel back to their hometown. Now, we love to sing the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. But the truth is, Bethlehem wasn't anything to go home to. Bethlehem was a small town that had seen its better days. And it wasn't that you just traveled back there for the fun of it. It was not a hustle and bustle, fun place to be. But they must travel back there because of the emperor saying so. Well, I have to tell you that in the, the area, there was, there was another governing body that worked for Caesar. And that was Herod. Herod was in charge of their area. And his job was to make sure that he got that tax money and whatever else he wanted to line his pockets with. Herod was not a good man. Herod was so power hungry that he killed his own sons so that they couldn't take his throne. 
He also sent out a decree for all the children around Jesus' age to be killed so they couldn't take his throne either. First boys must be taken. We find ourselves looking at how Rome had a huge piece of the story of Jesus. You see, Jesus is on his way in his mother's womb back to Bethlehem because of Rome, because of the governing bodies of that day and the power that they had and the money that they wanted. You see, at that moment, I imagine people felt at dismay. It was a season in their life of longing. They were under oppression we think our taxes are bad. We ain't seen nothing like what Caesar was putting on people. They were under such reign and terror. Can you imagine in that time period, they come ripping your children out of your home? This is not an easy time. And I wish I could say that Jesus' story was beautiful, and it is beautiful, but it doesn't begin beautifully. You see, Rome is in power, and Herod is in power, and they're all looking out for themselves. That's where the story begins. We find God's people longing for liberation, longing for a king to come, a king who would take over Rome and stop all of this. Yet what we find on our journey is they get a baby. You see, here's the thing that Herod and Caesar did not know. They did not know that you could not stop the author of creation in having his way. Because Jesus' story, God's story, our history was already being written by God. And all they were doing was creating a narrative that God had to work around. Nothing could stop what God had already put into motion. Nothing can stop the hope of God's people crying out for God, even though they were years from hearing from him. They were putting longing for hope, that hope out there that the, the king would come, the Messiah would come and free their people. I imagine many of us have found ourselves in situations where we feel as if everything is raining in on us and, and it's just so hard and sometimes you just don't know what you're going to do. But we have a hope in us, church, even in the toughest of moments to cry out to the Lord. We know who the author of Christ's story and our story is. See, Paul in Romans was explaining something about hope. He said, if you already can see what you're hoping for, that's not hope. That's a plan, church. Hope comes when you have to put your faith in action, when you have to put your faith in a God that could only be the one who can handle this business. In this moment, the hope of God's people is crying out in a situation they could never handle on their own. There was no way that they could handle what was happening to them. But God said, oh, you just wait because I am sending a baby to work through him. Because there, we understand that no matter what it feels like, no matter how tense or tight the pressure is on us, our hope is always in Christ. Many of us over the last 10 years have looked at our governing body of our own country and looked not to Rome, but looked to Washington or looked to City Hall. We look to those in leadership to do the right things and sometimes they just don't look out for the people. The people sometimes have no say in it as much as we want to. We want them to do the right things. But we don't put our hope in governments. We put our hope in God. Amen. We don't put our hope in economies that come and go and kill, almost kill us at the grocery store. We understand that that oppression is there and it is not easy. But our hope is not found in our wallets. Our hope is found in God. 
Some of us are putting our hope in the next promotion at work or a new leader to come in who will lead us at work in a better way with not an iron fist or with rudeness or narcissism. But the fact is our hope isn't found in the next boss either. It is found in God and God alone. We find ourselves sometimes in situations that we don't understand how God is going to move and work, church. But God will move and work because we know he will. We know that he is the author of our story. It is his story. History is his story. And our history will continue to be his story. If he is the author of our future, we have nothing but hope in our hearts. Because if God can do what he did, it went through Rome and all of their evil doings with Jesus. Imagine what he's going to do with our lives, church. I must ask you, though, what are you longing for? And I also ask you, where do we put our hope? Do we even have hope? Or are we looking for the next best plan? Because, yeah, I'm a planner. I've professed that to y'all. But the truth is, there's just some situations in life that it just is going to take faith and hope to get through. You can't plan your way through it. You just have to pray your way through it. We recognize that, that our story is being written by the Almighty. Yes, we may take some wrong turns and cause him to have to use an erasable ink pen. <laughs> but his story will come to fruition. We see that this Advent season as we anticipate the coming of the Christ child, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the one that no one expected. He came and he did not wield an iron fist. He wielded grace. He came and he ruled differently, church, so that we could learn to rule differently in our lives. God's story refuses to be dictated by anyone else. His story is just that, the one that he will write in us and through us. We can choose to be a part of that plan and put our hope in it, or we can choose to... Have him write some excerpts next to us. But I must tell you, if you'd have asked me eight years ago when life circumstances hit me and I didn't know what the answer was, I didn't know the future plan ahead. All I knew that is God had called me into ministry and that ministry just didn't look like the plan that I had. And my husband and I were... We're seeking where God wanted us to be. It was like as if there was no map, church. Have you ever been there where there's just no map forward? And you have to just keep moving one step in front of the other. You don't necessarily know exactly where you're headed. See, the powers that be had decided that life was going to be different, that, that I was going to, to be different. My, my position was going to be different. And my husband and I began seeking homes, not knowing exactly where we were going to land. And we landed in Clarksville. Then I landed a job three days later after closing on my house in Hendersonville, which is a two-hour commute each day. And I thought, God, did I make an error? What did I do? I went the wrong way, Father. I'm so sorry. But what I recognized is I didn't. And the thing that I thought I had made a location mistake, God said, oh, no, I'm preparing you for your future. What I didn't know was down the street for me in both directions were the churches that I would pastor soon. The poems that I would call that home to Bethel and Woodlawn. I had no clue that I was going to live in a community and be a part of a community before I ever got the pleasure of serving it. That doesn't happen often to clergy that itinerate. Normally we go in straight as pastor, but I got to be in the community and just get to know people and love people for six years before I ever got the honor to serve. 
God already knew. God knew the plan moving forward. God made a way where I didn't understand what in the world was going on. I imagine Mary felt that way. I imagine Joseph felt that way. When the Gabriel came to Mary and said, you are going to have a child, and he told Joseph, you're going to be the stepdaddy of that child. <laughs> they didn't see the way. But what they did was had a world that was telling them, you got to go to Bethlehem. You ain't got time to figure this out. Just like I didn't have time to figure it out, I just had to get a house. Sometimes life circumstances will put us in his place that God will do beautiful things. Rome had no clue the beauty that was coming because of the nasty ugly that they were doing. Jesus was going to fulfill a prophecy and they were making it happen. God was going to make sure that that baby was born exactly where he needed to be. And that's why our journey begins at Rome. Because even in the worst of situations, God is with us. If you don't know the way forward, put your hope in Christ because God will move us forward, church. If your situation is so big you can't handle it, God can put your hope there. I will tell you, not just like Paul did, that if we hope for what we don't see, we wait for it with patience. Our hope in Christ has to come with us having patience for him to answer. And it may not look the way we think. They wanted a king, they got a baby. But I promise you, if it is from God, it will be worth it. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that the empire does not control us, God. It may control our finances. It may control the laws of the land. But God, you are always the, the author of our story. That God, our hope is not found in man. Our hope is found in you. And God, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us a hope that cannot be squared wandered and squelted out and put out like a candle. Lord, no snuffing our hope out because our hope is found in you, God, who is eternal and always. And Lord, you said that you love your people and you would take care of your people. And God, you have done just that. Lord, we thank you for the provision that you have prepared for us now, but also in advance. God, we thank you for the, the Prince of Peace and that baby that came. God, who grew up in to be our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. And God, we know the power that comes from that. Continue to give us a hope, God, that surpasses all understanding. Father, if we think we, we know where hope is taking us, then Lord, we have just got a plan. Make our hopes so big, God. Make our dreams mighty. Make it all about your kingdom, God, because we trust you, Lord, on this Advent and season as we anticipate and long for you. Long for you to come into our lives and all the places, God. Let us have hope and cling to it with patience until it is fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to do communion today. It is the first Sunday of the month. I am going to clip on.